Coming up is a Facebook Live recording that I did for the Hello Meets community where we talk all about ASO. I answer a ton of beginner ASO questions, so if you're just starting out, then this is the episode for you. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.co. And before we go to the recorded Facebook Live video, I want to tell you about an exciting new program that we're just about to launch. You can start pre-ordering and ordering today if you want to get access to the special pre-order pricing. But it's App Masters Academy. We've put together everything that we do for our clients into one humongous library of video courses. This includes courses from some of our friends about how to localize apps, about how to cross promote, which ad units perform the best for monetization, and all the courses that we put together, including our ASO Apple feature courses, that's coming up soon, and the pay to free strategy that we talked about in our earlier videos. But it's a great, great course that we're super excited to launch with. It's $25 a month and it's pre-launch pricing right now. So if you wanna get access to it and lock in that $25 a month pricing, then go check it out. It is appmastersacademy.com, appmastersacademy.com. And we're gonna be launching in just a week, September 8th. 2017. So all that. We're just tidying up a few things just so you guys can have access to it. And then for the Apple feature course, I'm going to do that live with all the members there. So I'm going to walk you through our strategy, share the strategy, and then ask, answer any questions that we have from the community. So if you're ready to grow your app downloads, this is the complete course on influencer marketing, on ASO, on pay to free strategies, on any growth happy growth hacking campaigns that you can think of to grow your app downloads. So if you're ready to get started, go check out at mastersacademy.com. And now to the Facebook Live recording. Yeah, cool. So great question. Let me let me just start off with a little bit of overview of who I am and why I was invited to do this. So I am Steve P. Young. I'm the founder of appmasters.co. Been in the app space since 2011. And I was doing it on the side. I used to do growth hacking and online marketing for a startup in San Francisco. And I was doing apps on the side. I was like, oh, this is great. And in 2013, I decided, while well, I still had a startup, I was like, I want to take this seriously. I want to be an entrepreneur. I used to sell cassette tapes back when I was younger. And so I thought the best way to do it was to learn from my heroes. And I've always wanted to start a podcast. And as someone who listened to a lot of podcasts, I was like, oh, I know. I have this app space. I'll just interview some of my heroes on a podcast for the apps and apps are continuing to grow. Did that in 2013 on the nights and weekends. And then they started building up an audience who then started coming to me for app marketing help. And I was just learning at the time. So I've interviewed the co-founder Shazam, co -founder Shazam Crossy Road, Tweetbot, Clear, like all the big app developers out there. And I was doing that and built up an audience who then started coming to me for mar app, mar app marketing help. And after seven months after starting the podcast, I ended up leaving my startup job to pursue this full time. So since then, we've been known in the space for app store optimization, which is what we're going to cover. App getting clients featured by Apple. We've had 13 and one just last last week. And then influencer marketing and different growth hacks. So for those who are, so that's been like four years now. <laughs> we've got a podcast and a YouTube channel that you guys can all check out. But everything's on appmasters.co. But let's get into some of the questions. So if you're brand new to App Store optimization, essentially what it means is SEO for the App Store, right? So just like you would think about Google and your title, your page title, and the content on it, on that page, think of App Store optimization as the same thing. So your app name is sort of like the title for your Google if you're trying to optimize for that. And then you've got your keywords on Apple, and then on Google Play, you got your short description and your description. So you're just trying to optimize for what you think are going to be the most valuable in terms of traffic keywords in your app name and in your keyword fields. All right. I'll make sure I don't miss any questions here too. So let me get into some of the basic steps. So the, the basics are you want to, for app store optimization, don't just think about keywords. All right. It's important. It is important, but you got to have a good app because you can rank, there are different hacks out there to rank well for certain keywords, but if your app doesn't hold up, 
then it's not gonna sustain that high ranking, okay? So have that balance, but when you have that balance already, ready to go, then I would say your app name is gonna be the highest weight that you have for, I'm trying to fix the camera because I'm a stickler for this crap, but your app name is gonna have the highest weight. So you want your most valuable keywords in your app name. And then now with iOS 11 coming up in just probably a couple of weeks, the, the subtitle is gonna be important too. And obviously the keywords on iOS. So that's how you do it. Okay, <laughs> there's a lot of questions. All right, so let me start with the, I got the question about how do you get your app on top? I'm gonna rephrase that because there's so many different variables there. And then Sumit asks, what keyword tools do you use for keyword research on App Store and Google Play? All right, so that's a great question. And I did this case study, Sumit, on three different tools that I checked out. So I've tried a bunch of them, but I, my favorite so far, just so save you time, are Sensor Tower and Mobile Action. Now I would prefer to use Mobile Action because I've seen the best results from there, if you had to pick one, but I try to use both. That's my advanced strategies. Okay, so Arnav asked, so I hope that helps. So Mobile Action Sensor Tower for the tools that I would use and look at App Annie as well. And I don't know if I have enough time to go through all of this, but App Annie, what if I'm looking at competitors, I use App Annie because App Annie will tell me, if you look at the keywords on the left hand side, they'll tell me which keywords they're ranking well for. So unlike the other ASO tools where you have to input keywords, App Annie actually reveals keywords that a competitor is ranking well for. So it's a great way to do some keyword research. Arnav asks, we've got about a 16, 1,600 downloads for a buggy app. Now we want to relaunch it into a new one. Wow, there's a lot of questions coming in. I don't know, somebody. So Sahiba, I hope you're monitoring all the questions. So the, if you're going to relaunch it, that's what I would recommend. Depends. You've got the 1600 downloads already. And if it's like downloads are one thing, but how many users do you have? If you don't have that many users, it might be better to relaunch it as a brand new app because then you can try to get an Apple feature or you can do a brand new ASO on it, everything else. The, that's the pros, right? You can try to pitch Apple because it tends to be better, easier to pitch as a new app. The cons would be, let's say you've had, you've had good reviews. So out of the 1600, you've got like 100 reviews, whatever. And you don't wanna lose that, right? And so a part of ASO is also the, the length of time the app has been in the app store. And, and so if you have that length of time, you wanna save that, you wanna deploy that, then it might be worth it. If it's a non-game, I would probably keep it as the, the version right now. If it is a game, I'd probably relaunch it as a brand new app because it's easier for a game to get featured by Apple as a new game rather than an updated game. How long should the description be? Look, on the Apple side, it is probably not indexed so far. With iOS 11, it might be indexed. The other thing that, let me see if I can scroll through the comments. Oh, I can, okay, good. Okay, so I'm gonna try to hold this up. How long should the description be for an Android app? So you are you have 4,000 characters, Sapan. I would play around with all 4,000 as much as possible. I would have put a bunch of keywords. You know, there's differing reports that density is more important than actual like length of keywords. So think around like, when I do Google Play optimization, I tend to focus on a select few keywords, whereas on iOS, you know, I go after a lot of keywords. On Google Play, I just sort of concentrate on the most impactful keywords. So on iOS, I might be going after, let's say like 50 keywords and phrases, but on Google Play, I might shrink that to about 10 to 15 and just have a good density of that. And I would also say that what we've seen, because we've helped clients get you know, they're already number three, but we help them with a few tweaks to get to number one for a keyword on Google Play. What I've seen is short description, long description, and the first few characters of the description are really important. So I tend to repeat whatever keyword I'm targeting in the app name, the short description, and the first sentences of the long description. Cool. Can you share some ranking strategies as well? Like shed some light in... Okay, let me read this as if where people are listening to this. So Sumit, Sumit asks, cool, can you share some ranking strategies as well, like shed some light on the app store algorithms 
what are the main ranking signals. So submit, there's a couple of different variables, right? Your app name, the keywords that you're using, your attention, the reviews that you have, and the length of time that you've been on the app store. Now, I would probably say that the biggest, most, in terms of the algorithm, the heaviest weight is gonna be on the app name itself. We've been able to, you know, on average, we increase downloads for our clients for anywhere from 50 to like 400%, depending on what the bar that we're working with. So if you're averaging about five to 10, we would probably like double or triple or four X those downloads. If you're already averaging 50 to 100, probably I would say 50 to 20 to 50% increase in the download. So the biggest way to do it is have the keywords that you're really targeting in the app name. And then if you're gonna hack the system, repeat it in the subtitle with iOS 11. And then buy some reviews. I know a lot of people are, I'm assuming, based on the names, from India. And so I know you guys know how to buy reviews. But if, you, if your keywords have certain reviews in it, that should help with your rankings. Oh, the last thing is there's a Spanish Mexico trick. So if you're focused on the US store, I'm more focused on the ASO perspective from English speaking countries. There, the US app store indexes the Spanish Mexico localization. So if you put English keywords in that localization, app name, different app name, different subtitle, and different keywords in that localization, different from your US localization, then you can pretty much double the amount of keywords you're targeting. So usually I put competitors or lower traffic keywords that have low difficulty in the Spanish Mexico localization in English, okay? Hello, sir, you have only 500 downloads and have 63 rating, but someone have three rating, they are on top. So what to do? Get oh, 500 downloads. You, you, you know, like, I don't know. I need more details, Supan. So I'm sorry, like, I'd have to see the app a little bit more. It could be your keywords. It's kind of hard to det determine exactly if you're gonna get, that, gonna get that specific. It's easier for me to see the actual keyword or the actual app. All right. Oh, people are very active. Zoom in. <laughs> so, I am building an app in Instagram, auto followers like niche. I wanna know how to do competition research. Research. Some apps in the niche have five million downloads and they were launched just three months ago. I think that's the length of. So I would say, look, it's hard to tell because some of these guys are throwing a lot of marketing dollars on these apps. And so if you see something take off, like, you're like, whoa, what do they do? I would say they're throwing a lot of money at the at the app. And so unless you have a big budget, I would say the way, best way to do market research is to obviously download the app, look through their reviews, some are probably fake, and then look through App Annie to see which keywords they're targeting. But the way, or App Annie will tell you which keywords they're actually ranking well for, but know that if any app just jumps from nowhere, like the Sarah Ha one, that came out of nowhere, usually they're throwing a lot of money at it. So anywhere, and you're, you're asking probably like how much money? I would say anywhere from 50 to 100,000 a day, a day to get into the top charts. All right. Supon asks, I, I have seen many apps, they use same copy content and they are not the top. I don't know, what, what's the question, Supon? So re-ask that for me. All right. <laughs> That's a good question, Sai. So Sai asks, how can I retarget my app store listing visitor who came to my app page but did not install the app? And this is for Android. I have no clue, <laughs> to be honest. And I don't think that you can do that. Maybe look at AdWords to see if there's a way to do that. Like, hey, pass impressions. So I'm not sure, unlike a, you know, like retargeting for your website, I'm sure that's where your question comes from. I'm sure people are thinking about how to do it, but right now they, they haven't done it. But that's a great one, man. I like that. Okay. Any other questions? How are we on time? So let me try to, Supan, let me ask, the, you said many app, I saw that many apps, they use same copy content and they're not the top. Don't know what that means. Are you saying because they have the same app name? This is what I'm gonna assume, and I'm gonna answer it this way. They have the same app name, they have the same keywords, maybe similar icons, and they're not the top. 
right? What would, like I said, there's very, there's a lot of variables into app store optimization when it comes to rankings. So it could be that they're not retaining users. It could be that they have no reviews whatsoever. So it's not just like copying, hey, I'm, I'm gonna copy Flappy Bird. I'm gonna create a very similar app and call it Flappy Bird 2, right? If there's no reviews, if there's nothing going on, just because you have that keyword into your app name, doesn't mean you're gonna rank well for it. There's all these other variables. So once you've optimized it, the app name, the subtitle and all, and you sort of play with that, I'd focus on reviews. I'd focus on other things and downloads too, because that's part of the algorithm. How do I drive more downloads? Okay, here's some more stuff. All right, I shared your video with the no. Well, thank you for sharing the video, I appreciate it. <laughs> Facebook said, thank them. They are using the same description in their app after that they are on top. Okay. I don't know if, the, if there's a question in there, but look on Android, the description is gonna come way, it's a bigger, it's a bigger piece of the puzzle than on iOS, the description. On iOS, it's not a huge part yet. Thanks for sharing the video, guys. I really do appreciate that. How Google decide rank in the App Store. Google is doing a lot because they're so smart and they come from the search world. They're doing a lot in terms of figuring out retention, uninstall rates. So their algorithms are way more, I would say, sophisticated than iOS. So it is app name, short description, long description, and then reviews, and then downloads, and also retention. So make sure it retains really well. I don't know, Supan. So I think you, your question, he, you asked, they are using the same app name, same description. After that, they're on top and they are and they have no ratings. Look, I think it's too specific. So maybe it's just a copycat trying to figure that out. I think it's a little too specific for your type of app. I don't think it will work well. I don't think it's a long-term strategy. And I think it's being that it's too specific, it might not make sense for everybody else that's here as well. Okay, that's a great one. A lot of Android questions. So I asked, if I frequently update my app screenshots, would it help in increasing app rank? Yeah, because what you would you can do, Sai, what I would do if I were you is do A-B testing on Google Play with your screenshots and then figure out which one converts better. So for a client of ours, I actually said, hey, your icon needs to be updated. It looks a little bit outdated. And we changed, we created a brand new icon for him. We changed it and we A-B tested on Google and we saw a 25%, I was somewhere around 25 or 50. I forgot what he eventually said. I posted it at 25, I think he said 50, but a 50% increase in downloads by just changing the icon. So those little things come into play. And then once you figure out what works, you know, may, let it go for a while and then maybe try to optimize your app name too. You know, I would take it step by step. So I would say app name, short description, long description, hack those, see if there's a change, maybe there's a little bit of change, then focus on the actual optimization, so the conversion, so icon, screenshots, and then is there a change? Yes, good, now go back into the app name, short description, all that, and keywords. So I just did take it step by step, because if you change too many things at once, you don't know what's, what's driving the growth. All right, really good questions. I Con, I think you said, you mean I want to talk with you, not I won't. So I hope that's want, not won't. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, is there any website for ASO? Supon, yeah, there's a bunch of them. So App Annie is one. This is, like I said, this is where they'll show you the competitors or you put in your competitor or even put your own app and they will, if you go in the keywords tab, they'll show you all the keywords you're ranking, ranking well for. And then Mobile Action and Sensor Tower are the other ones. And then I have a bunch of ASO content if you want to check that out on appmasters.co and go under like popular posts. There's one about, I think, seven advanced ASO strategies. Can you please share some of the best tips and tricks? <laughs> yeah, so the Spanish-Mexico trick that I just told you about, the other trick that I would give you guys is to, with iOS 11 coming up, the app name is getting shorter to 30 characters. So make sure that 
you know, you, you're abiding with those and then repeat, repeat whatever you keyword you want to, you want to target into the subtitle. I've seen pretty good results with that on the Android side, because I know you guys are a lot on Android. I would say app name, it's going 50 now. So come really do that. And what I would say is also repeat. Like I said before, repeat whatever keyword you're targeting, the app name, short description, and the first couple of sentence of the long description. I'm trying to think. Oh, the other thing I would say is I the tools I've recommended, Mobile Action and Sensor Tower, I would actually use both if you have the budget. If you only had to pick one, I'm seeing different results. So if it's just Android and you had to use one, what I've seen is that the the traffic scores on Sensor Tower are probably more correct and more accurate than mobile action, but the difficulty scores on mobile action are probably more correct. I did this case study, there's a video on YouTube where for a client of ours, we increased his rankings into the top five for like six or seven keywords. And according to mobile action, they actually had decent volume, search volume, but we didn't see an increase in downloads at all. And so when I looked at the search scores on Sensor Tower, I saw that they were actually pretty low, but mobile action said, you know, difficulty is low, which they were right because we're ranking in the top five or six for these keywords, but no increase in downloads. So that's why I'm kind of like, if you can pay for both, I would pay for both. All right, all right. Let's see. Supan, so, I think we need to just talk one-on-one -on -one because you have a lot of, how do I get on top type of questions and it really depends on the app. Okay, so let me say yes. on Google, on play app page, we can see three to four reviews, which are on top, how Google ranks top reviews. If I want to put four or five reviews on top, how can I do that? No idea, Sai. Si. Okay, cool. Well, I hope I'm coming through for you. Sahiba, she said, we have been waiting for some kick-ass tips from you, which we wouldn't find in the books and blogs. Thanks in advance. Awesome. Okay. Sakshi asks, hey, Steve, which all growth hacking strategies can we adopt to increase app downloads on a budget? So Sakshi, the, I have a blog post about this, my favorite, and I actually wrote about this on entrepreneur.com, but it's about my favorite growth hacking strategies on a budget. So my favorite one, this unfortunately doesn't work on Android yet, is called a pay to free strategy, which works for both paid and free apps. Okay, so it's essentially, if you have a paid app, you make it free for a couple of days. And I would just say one day, make it free for one day. You have to get pressed for it on App Advice and BGR. That drives a tremendous amount of downloads. And then on the next day, you make it paid again. And I'm about to share this case study where a client, we did this, we drove over 33,000 downloads for his paid app. And it's a $12 app, okay? And an additional $1,000 revenue. And all we did was the day was free, it drove all those downloads. And then because it spiked in the rankings, we we're able to get an additional $1,000 from that as well, okay? From that campaign. For a free app, you can make one of your in-app purchases for free. So it could be virtual characters, if you have the technical capability or an a in-app purchase, like a non-consumable. So like a remove ads, additional levels, things like that. You make it free. They'll, you definitely have to get press. App advice, BGR, which stands for boygeniusreport.com. Those are the two big sites that cover it. Got some hearts on that. I like, I'm liking these hearts. Show me some more hearts. Give me some more hearts. I like the hearts. Keep them coming. Hearts are good. All right, backlinks also work on Android Play on Play Store. Yeah, Supan, they do work. I just don't see them working as effectively as if you just change the app name around. So it might work in terms of like the tiebreaker, right? But not so much if that's like your main strategy, just building up app backlinks. Can we use same keyword? Yeah, I love these hearts. All right. I, I love the smiley faces too. I saw a few of those. Those are good. <laughs> oh, look, oh, look at this. All right, let's, let me just, ah, it feels good. All right, I saw a lot of hearts. Okay, can we use the same keyword in the long description? Absolutely, absolutely. That's what I would do. Like I said, you know, what I've been playing around with and you, this is something you guys wanna test is the bolding. 
certain keywords that I, <laughs> these start to now distract me, bolding certain keywords that I'm targeting. So, you know, it's a trick that works well on SEO. So I was like, hey, would it work? I don't have enough data yet, so I'm still toying around with it, but I've been bolding keywords in the description that I wanna focus on Google Play. Please send the link here. Are you talking about the strategies? I'm not sure. All right, did DAU play a part in increasing app rank? You know, it's yes, I would say Sai, yes. DAU just means daily active users. I would say yes, because it's retention, right? Retention is becoming a key part. It's always been a key part on Google Play, but not so much Apple, and I think Apple's starting to take into account of this as well. Hi, Steve. On a website, I can target different customer segments by creating different landing pages. How do I target them on the App Store? So, yeah, there's no, I think you're talking about A-B testing. Neha, so on Google Play, you can do that, right? You can A-B test. There's no way to say like, I only want to show these people this thing and these people this thing. So all people named Steve gets one app page, all people named Mark get another page. There's no way that you can do that. The, the best way is to A-B test. So the only thing you can do is A-B test different icons and hope for the best, but there's no way you can target. I mean, the only way you can do that is probably just running Facebook ads and targeting different customers and showing them different messaging based off of that. So I would say probably like, yeah, Facebook ads probably the best because I was thinking through Google AdWords and I don't think you can do that with Google AdWords either. So I asked, will increase in uninstall lead to reduce app ranking? Yes. Yes, the blog link. It's just appmasters.co slash popular dash posts or blog I mean you guys can look it up if you're on the computer go to appmasters.co and then I think at the very bottom it says popular blog posts just click on that and you just see all my popular blog posts so Supan asked what keyword tools do you use for keyword research on App Store and Play Store I've already mentioned a bunch Supan pay attention it's App Annie mobile action sensor tower on Google Play description the only place I can stuff keywords for Google Play optimization. Yes, Ian, on Google Play, you can only stuff keywords. You can do that in the app name now. They made it 50 characters. Short description, long description. Put them on the left, just like SEO. Put your most valuable, most targeted keywords on the left-hand side. So start with that. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. We're happening all the hards. Come on, man. Will app indexing help me increase my app rank? Site. I mean, these are all like micro type of questions. And the way I feel about this is it's too micro, right? Like, yeah, probably, but like just focus on building a good app, putting the right keywords in the app name. That's where I've seen the most benefit. Like people ask me all this stuff about iOS store. And I'm like, I've been able to see increase in downloads with a crappy icon, crappy screenshots and crappy everything else just by optimizing the app name and the keywords within it and finding the right keywords. The key to app store optimization in my belief is finding keywords that have decent competition. I mean, I'm sorry, decent traffic, but low competition. And that's why I recommend using both mobile action and sensor tower, because what I've found is both, if both tools are telling me low competition, I tend to rank really high for that. If one says it and the other doesn't, then it's a mismatch of sometimes it doesn't always work, but if both tools are telling me, yes, this keyword has low competition, I can rank really high for that keyword. Deepik asks, how effective is A-B testing? Testing Really effective, I we increased downloads by 50% for a client just by changing around his app icon. So really effective when you can do it well. All right, thanks for staying up so late, guys. I only get hearts when I ask for it. That doesn't feel that great. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Black Hat ASO works. Sai asked, will Black Hat ASO work? So Black Hat ASO, I've shared this strategy too, is when you sort of game the system and put reviews. So what I saw, my Black Hat ASO strategy was buy reviews with keywords that you're targeting that helps your app rankings. So it does work. It's just, it's not a long-term strategy, but it is a strategy that a lot of people deploy. Because if you think about it, if you see an app and you're like, holy crap, they launched two days ago and they have like 100 reviews, 
it's probably Black Hat ASO and they're probably buying reviews. So a lot of people, a lot of companies are doing it. It's just, I don't know if it's a long-term strategy. I know a lot of big, bigger game companies doing it. The other way to Black Hat ASO is what I call a search boost. Some people call it search spike. I don't know. But essentially what it is, is driving downloads with a keyword search. So they users search for your targeted keyword and then download your app and that games the system. Now, again, what we've seen is we went, helped the client go from 108 to one and then I think he landed in the top three or four. But essentially, you gotta have a really good app, right? Like he already had a ton of reviews, a really well optimized app and we're able to make it stick. Cause I've seen certain keywords that go all the way up and then all the way back down. And it's been some of my clients, it's like, well, oh, sorry, you didn't stick, but we got you there for one day. And we've been doing this for another client where we're going after really, really competitive keywords and we're being able to get them up there. And it takes time too, but he's already got a good app. He's already got good reviews. He's already well optimized. So it tends to work that way. And I did this for one of my apps and we were able to rank really high for low competition, high traffic keywords. So can you name some companies who are doing Black Hat ASO? I don't want to be associated with that, but I... I, we do some of that, Sai. And then the other ones are called, I think they're called, here, let me pull it up on my website. Okay, here we go. I think it's this one that I use. Yeah, so ASO top one, the number one, dot com. And that allows you to do those keyword things in there. And then the other one where I started buying reviews, be careful when you buy reviews, is bestreviewapp.com. It's a great like spammy name, aren't they? Bestreviewapp.com is where I've tried to buy a few reviews on there. They don't always stick. The thing about buying reviews is Apple's obviously catching on and same with Google. And what happens is you see them live on the app store and a couple of days later, Google and Apple take them down. So be very, very careful. The way I like to do this is I like to run this pay to free campaign that I answered earlier, where I drive a tremendous amount of downloads organically, good users, and then I buy reviews. So from an Apple and Google perspective, it looks very much like nothing funny is going on. All right, guys, anything else before we wrap up and I take off and start working on some other things? Cool. Well, I do, if any questions come up, I'll answer them, but I do appreciate you coming on so late. And if you guys got any questions or want to follow up with me, you know, go to appmasters.co and my email address is just steve at appmasters.co as well. Thank you to Hello Meets for inviting me on. This was a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Ah, tell me, tell me, wait. Ian, come on, right, Ian. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. Just one. All right. I did get something from Sai. Did Google penalize these apps who use coupon codes in images? I don't think so. I mean, I've seen a ton of people use it on iOS. I don't. I don't think it's a big deal. I wouldn't worry about it. All right, Ian, hit me. I have an answer, man. Go re. I don't know what you put in, Ian. Put it again. Uh, okay. Would like to Rohith. Ask, would like to understand the worthiness of Aptopia and AppAnny. I think AppAnny is really expensive, so I don't know if people on a budget can really afford it. I think they're really meant for enterprise companies. Aptopia, I did interview the founder. It is something that I'm personally exploring myself into purchasing some of the like the downloads and the revenue numbers just to see what other apps are doing. And so I think Aptopia, I would probably start with that. They tend to have really good data. And, just, and they have an indie plan that's more beneficial to startup folks and indies like ourselves. All right, come on, hit me. Ian is sad, his answer. <laughs> what do you think about hash growth? Rohit, I don't know what hash growth is, actually. Let's put it in there. Hello! Growth, all right, let's see. Alex, yeah, there's so many. Okay, so it looks like another ASO tool. I've tried a bunch, like obviously because of the blog and the podcast, people send me, hey, can you check out my ASO tool? 
it's just so much work and so many different tools that I try to stick with what's already working. Once my stuff don't work anymore, then I check it out. So I try to do my best to check out other tools, but at the same time, like, unless I hear frequently, I mean, I'll tell you an example, like, I've heard about mobile action for a long time. I didn't start using them until some of my friends said, have you checked out mobile action? It's pretty cool. And like three or four people started saying that. I was like, oh, maybe I should start using it. And so I started using both because I was just using Sensor Tower at the time. Uh, it's more like Apple. I ain't trying to make a dent. Uh, a lot of people. Rohit says, check it out. It's trying to make a dent in the ASO market. A lot of people are trying to make a dent, Rohit, in the ASO market. Supan, can I send you a friend request? Sure. Why not? As long as you send me a lot of hearts. As long as I get a lot of hearts on my photos, that's cool. Especially my kids. Okay, how do I target competitor keywords on Google Play if the description section is the only one I can use? Ian. So one, we've been able to do it well. So I'll say that first. And two, look at the competition. Because if it's a competitor term, like Tinder, for example, and it's really competitive, it, don't ma it won't matter if you put it 10 times. right? Like You're probably never going to rank for it. So find the difficulty of that keyword. If it's low difficulty, then target it. And I would try to put it in the description. I would just like, and I've done this for other clients. We've ranked number two or three for these keywords. That's because I saw that there was an opening, meaning there's low competition for the keyword and high traffic. And so I just put, I bury it towards the end of the description and I put a bunch of things in there. So do that and maybe you can bury it in the short description too. Be like, hey, you know, if you love, Tinder, you'll love Ian's app, Ian's dating app. All right. Uh, oh man. If I if my app is trending in the app category, will my app install increase? Most likely, Sai. Yeah, I know, Rohith. I'm, I know you mean hash growth. Cool. Everyone, send Steve requests and send him hearts. <laughs> he loves hearts. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for staying up a little bit later. If you're in India, if you're in the States, let's do it, man. It's just starting the day. Appreciate it. Hello, mates. Again, thank you so much for inviting me on. If you guys want to follow up with me and give me more hearts, it is at masters.co, and my email is at masters.co as well. Not the com, it's the .co. Sai, I am sorry, man. I got to go. Thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate you so much. Okay, all right, Sai, last question. My app rank is 17th in maps and navigation category. Please share me some tips. How can Sai, we shared a ton of tips. Go check out the blog post, Growth Hack That Thing. There's other ways to do it. We were able to get number 27 for like, there's ways, other ways to do it. So let's follow up offline on this. I'm going to take off. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time. Thank you again to Hello Meets. All right, how do I do this? <laughs> Let's play with some filters. Bye guys, appreciate you. All right. <laughs>